Now students, one of the things that is wonderful about receiving your degree from Comm Studies today is that you are joining a highly esteemed group of alumni. And every year we have the opportunity to invite one of our distinguished alumni back to speak to you as you move forward into the world. And so it's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today, Leslie Siebert. Are you about to be wowed, students? Let me tell you a little bit about Leslie. Leslie is a senior managing partner at the Gersh Agency, heading its talent division for the last 33 years. She oversees 3,500 clients, 50 personal clients, 100 agents, and 200 employees. She was the first non-family member to be made partner. The agency books $1 billion in deals each year. Leslie works directly with actors, finds them work, negotiates their deals, and builds their brands. Her clients include award-winning talents, such as the seven-time Emmy winner, Allison Janey, who is the star of Mom, Jeffrey Tambor, who recently won the Emmy for playing a transgender woman on Amazon's groundbreaking show, Transparent. That's in addition to his 2016 Screen Actors Guild and Golden Globe Awards. Kyle Chandler, the Emmy Award winner for Friday Night Lights, who was also nominated for seasons one and two of Bloodline for Best Actor in a Drama Series. Two-time Oscar nominee Catherine Kinnear and David Swimmer, whose amazing performance on American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, took the town by storm and also garnered him his second Emmy nomination, with his first being from Friends. Students are too young to remember Friends. <laughs> Other, no you're not, good. Other clients include Mandy Moore, the star of This Is Us, Angela Bassett, the star on American Horror Story, Meg Ryan, Taylor Schilling from Orange is the New Black, Celia Ward, Cal Callista Flockhart, Deborah Messing, Eric McCormick, and Kate Walsh from 13 Reasons Why. An impressive list. Siebert received her BA in Communication Studies from UCLA in 1984. She lives in Westwood, West, Westwood with her husband Stephen, who is right over here joining us today. And she has two sons. Her son Jack is a junior at NYU's Gallatin School, and her son Henry is a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania. Please help me welcome Leslie. Good morning. It's such an honor to deliver this year's commencement address to the UCLA Communication Studies graduating class of 2017. When Chair Professor Carrie Johnson asked me to be the keynote speaker, I immediately said, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm truly the last person I would ask to give this speech. I'm shy, I'm awkward, I don't like crowds, and I have a huge fear of public speaking. So why did I say yes? Was it my inner voice telling me, you can do it, take a risk, go outside your comfort zone? Absolutely not. <laughs> Actually, my parents made me do it. <laughs> they're there. They told me, it's not a choice, Leslie, it's an honor. And of course, they're right. I'm truly honored to be here today. I'm proud to have graduated from this fine institution with a degree in communications, and I'm especially proud to have my mom and dad here with me today. So let's start by congratulating your parents. As the mother of two sons in college, I know what you've been through. And of course, congratulations to all your friends and family. But most importantly, congratulations to all of you. You've done it. It's no small feat. As a fellow Bruin, I know what that means. Today you're joining a community of global leaders, innovators, and visionaries who graduated from UCLA's phenomenal School of Communication Studies. Just like you, they sat here in Royce Hall, eager with knowledge, surrounded by fellow grads and lifelong friends. You're the class of 2017, ready to take on the world. So now what? That's the question you've been asked so many times over the past four years, right? No doubt some of your well-meaning relatives already asked you this morning, so now what? <laughs> if they haven't yet, trust me, they will, I know. I drive my sons crazy every day with the same question. I'm sure some of you have figured it out already. You've lined up a job, been accepted to grad school, working on a startup, developing an app, or traveling the world. All fantastic choices. But I'm sure many more of you are seriously asking yourself, so now what? So let me tell you my story. I hope it inspires you, and if nothing else, entertains you. 
When I started UCLA, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. All I knew was I wanted to work in the entertainment business. Doing what, I couldn't tell you. But I was anxious to quickly figure it out. So I hustled and threw myself out there. With the fantastic support of the Communication Studies Internship Program and the wonderful and recently retired Marty Gregory, I interned in the business every semester. My first internship was with Entertainment Tonight. It was back in 1980, and it was the first year they were on the air. As an intern, I researched stories, endlessly filed tapes, and helped put together the show each night. I remember at the time thinking, what a great idea for a show, but I really didn't see a future in fake news. Well, what did I know? <laughs> Next, I explored the world of casting. I thought, perfect, I like actors. I can discover the next Hollywood star. I decided I'd be a casting director, done. So my now what was answered. In my senior year, I interned for two of the top Hollywood casting directors on some of the most iconic shows of the 80s. Family Ties, Benson, The A-Team, ask your parents. <laughs> I was ambitious, I was energetic, and I was sad to say, seriously bad at the job. When asked to come up with casting ideas for a certain role, I draw a complete blank. I literally could co not come up with one single actor's name. When asked, to read an actor's audition, uh, when asked to read with an actor auditioning for a part, I'd get so nervous about my own performance, I would forget to notice if the actor was any good. <laughs> Everything about it felt wrong. Basically, I sucked at casting. <laughs> so now what? I was about to graduate, I had no job, I had no direction other than I knew what I didn't like and what I wasn't good at. Once again, I asked myself, so now what? Two weeks after graduation, I heard that the Gersh Agency had an opening in business affairs working for the in-house attorney. I'd consider going to law school for a minute, so I thought, perfect. I took the job and learned how to read a contract and what to look for in a deal. Skills I still use now, but not a career I wanted to pursue. At the same time, I offered to read scripts for the head of the agency, who represented Harrison Ford and Michael J. Fox. I spent my weekends reading as many scripts as I could, and on Mondays, I'd come in and tell them which ones I thought were good and which ones were bad. Sometimes he even put me on the phone with the clients to give my two cents. I couldn't believe it. He thought my instincts were good and my taste was right on, and I was only 21. Thank you, Com Studies 10. It was fun, it was exciting, and I quickly realized this was it. My skill and passion was in representing actors, not casting them, selling instead of buying, mastering the art of negotiating deals, finding opportunities and thinking creatively. I loved everything about it. I'd made myself indispensable, and within a year, I was made an agent. Great, so now what? Now I needed clients. While at UCLA, I bagged groceries on the weekends at Gelson's Market in Encino. One of the highlights of the job, and there weren't many, was bagging groceries for Jeffrey Tambor. Not a great tipper, but a great guy, and one of my favorite actors. Cut to three months after being made an agent, I was invited to a client's wedding, and over there, over the seafood station, piling shrimp onto his plate, was Jeffrey Tambor. <laughs> Shy as I was, I marched over and reintroduced my myself to him. Hi, I'm Leslie, remember me? I used to bag your groceries. <laughs> He asked me what I was doing now, and I told him proudly, I'm an agent at Gersh. He laughed, offered me a shrimp, and affectionately patted me on the head. <laughs> the next day, I tracked down his number and called him up. I asked him if he was happy with his representation. That, that's what agents say to actors. Again, he laughed at me, asked how I got his number, and quickly hung up. <laughs> I called him again the next day, and the day after that. I sent him scripts. I told him about projects he was right for. I drove the poor guy crazy. I never let up. I was fearless. Six months later, I got a call from Jeffrey asking if he could come into the office. He came in for a meeting, and while shaking his head and telling the senior partners I used to bag his groceries, he signed with me. He told me he signed with me because I chased him until he finally gave up. <laughs> he was my first major client. I put him in the Larry Sanders show, The Hangover, and Arrested Development. Thirty years later, he's still a client and at the peak of his career after recently winning the Emmy and Golden Globe for his brilliant work in Transparent. As a young agent, I continued to build my client list. 
I signed Deborah Messing, who I put in Will and Grace, Kyle Chandler, who I put in Friday Night Lights, and two-time Academy Award nominee Catherine Keener, who I put in 40-Year-Old Virgin. I signed David Schwimmer when he graduated Northwestern, and back in 1994, I got him a little show called Friends. That show was on the air for 10 years, was one of the most popular television shows of all time, and made David one of the highest paid actors in TV history at a million dollars an episode. <clears throat> I was young and green back then, but I loved what I was doing. I loved reading scripts and being part of the creative process. I loved finding roles in films and TV that could change an actor's career. I loved representing actors. While I remain proud of the careers that I've helped build and sustain over the years, I've also had my share of setbacks. In 1995, I signed Toby Maguire after seeing him in a short film. He was an unknown, awkward 19-year-old kid. No one in town wanted to sign him, but I saw something special. In 2002, the kid most unlikely to be America's superhero got the part of Spider-Man. The film was a major success. Don't clap for him. The <laughs> The film was a major success and made Toby into an international star. In 2004, while in pre-production for Spider-Man 2, Sony decided to recast Toby. It was not a pretty scene. I was ultimately able to save his job, but unfortunately was an, unable to save mine. After representing him for seven years, he fired me. Needless to say, I was devastated. I still lose clients, sometimes for being too honest, too harsh, for pushing too hard, and sometimes for just no good reason. And that's okay. That's what a long career looks like, especially the career of a talent agent. It's about creating opportunities, having a vision, fighting for someone, not giving up, the joy of triumph, and the unfortunate possibility of getting dumped. So now what? You move on to your next challenge, you take risks, and you succeed with failures and disappointments along the way. 33 years later, I'm still at my first job, and I still feel fortunate to be part of this exciting business, hopefully changing people's lives for the better. And I continue to search out and create opportunities for my clients in an ever-changing marketplace. So is that success? Yes, because I continue to do what I love and love what I do. But my definition of success is different than when I first began my career. Success then was to create stars, make big money, and to run and build one of the top talent agencies in the business. While those things remain important, success now for me is mentoring and giving back every chance I get. Success is my marriage of 24 years and my two sons who are finding their way in life. Success is having my parents, family, and friends here to share all of this with me. Your definition of success will change and your path may change as well. Whether it's your first job out of college like me or your fifth or 15th, you will find your passion and you will figure it out, I promise. Needless to say, it's a very different business than when I started. For all of you who are entering this business right now, you have no idea of the revolution that's awaiting you. There has never been a time more ready for all of you graduates to thrive. So whatever direction you choose, always remember the following. Find your confidence, be fearless, be unafraid. The world wants you to succeed. Don't get in your own way. Just go for it and enjoy the ride. Embrace your mistakes. You will make a lot of them. Everyone does. I know I have. Those mistakes will make you stronger and smarter. Don't worry about failure. Every failure is an opportunity to learn something new, and without mistakes, life would be dull. Don't be driven by other people's voices. Not your parents. Sorry, parents. Not your friends, not society. This journey is yours. And while on your journey, enjoy it now. Love it while you're doing it. Don't wait for the payday. Don't wait for the corner office. Your red carpet is now. Enjoy it. And finally, go beyond your accomplishments. Stay connected with your Bruin family and friends. Hit up the alumni. And continue to give back to your, your UCLA community. We will always be here to support you as you forge ahead. The rest of your life is up to you. Remember to enjoy every single moment of it as you continue asking yourself, so now what? Congratulations again to the class of 2017, and happy Father's Day to all the proud fathers out there.